this talk is really uh, designed so that you get to understand uh, a little more of like you know this optimization problem coming from 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 clustering uh, applications, and you know the hope is also that you know I get you interested and you know. Uh, uh, willing to work on these problems, and uh, and so if there is anything that isn't clear, you should you should really uh, feel free to interrupt. Okay, so this is a, this is a kind of a, a bunch of papers. It's not particularly one paper. It's like various papers from different collaboration and also papers from different people. So it's more like a survey talk than you know uh, explaining one of my results specifically or something. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so so just the, the very basic motivation that you know um, uh, many of you have already seen these slides. You know, every time I promise I will change it, but it's it's so useful to have it. So uh, this is this is the standard slides giving one motivation for clustering, which is you know you have some points that um, I mean you have some data sets and you want to know to divide to divide it into groups of points of data elements that are similar to one another. Okay, so so the one classic example is like you have images that represent you know digits, and you want to uh, find uh, images that represent the same digit. And now, of course, what you what you want is that um, you have a distance function between the data elements of your data sets, such that data elements that are similar they are close under this distance function, and data elements that are very dissimilar they are very far. Okay, so that's the that's the main thing, and so what you want to do is find groups of data elements that are close to one another, that are similar to each other, and that are you know somewhat dissimilar, far from the rest of the world. Okay, and and for example, uh, for for these uh, images of handwritten digits, this works pretty well, and there are many settings where it actually works uh, very well. So that's uh, that's uh, that's a very good uh, uh, that's that's the main motivation of this of this uh, of this uh, uh, problem. Okay, so. Um, good. So that's the, that's the motivation, but you know, quickly I'm going to go directly into some kind of more formal definition and try to give you, uh, try to model this uh, in terms of uh, an optimization problem. Okay, so in the rest of this talk, I'm going to work on metric spaces. So a metric space is, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows what, what the metric space is. So it's basically a set of points and a distance function on top of these points. And, uh, you know, it satisfies triangle inequality. And that's basically the, uh, the, 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 the input we will assume, we, we, and like the structure on the input we will have. And sometimes we have more structure on that on the input, but sometimes not. So that's the, but let's start with metric space. And the goal of the clustering, you can, you can define it like this, is that you get a, a client set, so a set of points that you want to cluster. These are the points from your data sets. And the parameter key, which is the number of clusters you want. And now the goal is to find a set of k representative such that you know uh, you, you 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 have a good representation of your input, and this good representation of your input is quantified using uh, an objective function, which is the sum of the uh, distances from each point to the closest representative. And then you can take the sum of the distances, the sum of the distances squared. That's the k-median and the k-means problem, respectively. And these are like these, these are fundamental, like widely studied objective function to model these these k clustering problem. Okay, so that's the very basic definition here. So think about delta as like you know just a distance function, gamma as a set of points. And now you know we have a, a subset of the point. Okay, so this is this is like uh, you know a very basic problem. And if it's not if it's unclear to, to to anyone, just feel free to interrupt here. I mean, so uh, this is this is supposed to be pretty clean. What's the optimization problem we're going to work with? Okay, so the issue is that when you go from here to uh, just when you start playing with this problem a little bit, then you run into some computation issue. So let's say now we look at now this metric space that I was talking about, where you have your points. I could take, for example, R2. It's a valid metric space, right? It's like R2 under the Euclidean distance, so the L2 norm. And now, you know, if I give you three points A, B, C in R2. And you would like to find the one median, so the point D that minimizes the sum of the distances from A, B, C to D. Okay, so it minimizes uh, the L2 distance from A to D, from B to D, plus, plus C to D, and you want to minimize to find, find, find point D that minimizes this quantity. And in fact, this question was asked by Fermat in the 17th century, and it's not that obvious to actually, you know, 
with your uh, hole and compass to construct this 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 point D. So in fact, I think uh, Torricelli uh, gave an answer to Fermat. But now, if you move away from three points, you, you go to four or five points. I think five points. It's now hard to. I mean, it's it's, it's in fact not so easy to compute what's the median, uh, the the point that minimizes the sum of distances. And in fact, it's uh, the complexity class of the problem uh, of the finding the one median of a set of n points in d dimension. Uh, this uh, under under the L two distance, right? The Euclidean distance in R D um, is not solved. So it's a, it's actually a, a, a cute open question. I think that you know finding it's probably beyond N P, but it's not clear exactly where where this 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 problem lies. Okay. So given this little uh, caveat. We may want to look at a, a discrete version of the problem, where you know I'm slightly modifying the problem now, such that in on top of the client set and the parameter k, which is again the number of clusters, you may want to also have as an input the set of candidate center for which you have to pick from. Okay, because now we don't want to run into this problem of computing the exact median and so on, because that's a little complicated. We don't know exactly how to compute it, so we just want to say, okay, this set of candidate center, we're going to pick it from a discrete set. We can't pick it from anywhere in R2 or in RD. Okay. And now you want to find a set of K representatives that is a subset of your candidate centers so that you minimize these quantities. Okay. And you know, if you if you go, going just going back quickly on this previous slide, if you if you want to minimize this objective function here up to one plus epsilon factor, then you know it's poly time and so on. So you know, up to losing one plus epsilon factor for a constant epsilon, then you know it's not big. It doesn't change much the complexity of the problem. So you know, going there is up to one plus epsilon is sometimes not that uh, uh, a big issue, big of an issue. Okay. Uh, yet you can ask, is it easier or harder? Is it now and that I move from the continuous to the um, discrete case? You can ask whether you know, the problem is going to be computationally harder or easier, right, in terms of complexity. If you really take the complexity point of view, you can ask, okay, uh, now I'm constraining, I'm constraining opt to the optimum solution to leave on these candidate centers. So in fact, you know, I'm had adding more constraint to opt. So it's never clear whether this is going to make your problem easier or harder. And in fact, it's interesting, and we'll see in this talk that it, depending on the underlying metric, it makes it harder or easier. So, um, so the, the answer to this question is like, you know, yes, in, it, it does in both cases. <laughs> it does make it easier and harder. Okay, so that's the that's the problem setup right now. And uh, if you have any question on the problem, you should you should feel free to ask, you know, by voice or chat. Okay. But it should be it should be not too complicated. Okay, okay. So now we can go over a little review of the uh, complexity of this problem, and then we'll go into the uh, some proving some of these results. And you know, then to the uh, uh, open questions. So, you know, if you are in uh, uh, in arbitrary dimension, which means for me, arbitrary dimension is like at least log n, uh, and you have n points, and you are in uh, um, R D, like you know, or under the Euclidean distance, or so, and any LP LP norm, then even if the number of clusters you are looking for is two, it's NP hard. Okay. So then you can go to the other extreme. You, you say, okay, I'm going to be in small dimension, and then you know the, the the number of dimension is now two. And again, you know, if you are in Euclidean space of like you know two dimension, then under any LP metric, it's going to be NP hard. But now the number of clusters is like large. You want a large number of clusters. Okay. So that's the, the setting, and it's W two hard parameterized by K in general. Metrics. So if you have in arbitrary metrics, I now forget Euclidean plane or Euclidean uh, space, and you are in general metric, you just have the triangle inequality, then it's W2 hard. So what does that mean to be W2 hard? Is that we don't really hope to have a better than n to the little of k algorithm for solving this problem. So basically, you can always solve this problem by in n to the k because you just enumerate all possible subset of size k for your centers. And then you compute the, uh, you know, the, you, you take the one that is the best. So n to the k is something you can do. And basically, w two hard tells you that n to the k is more or less what you, the, the best you can hope for in general metrics. Okay. And in Euclidean space, there is an exact n to the kd algorithm. It's which, 
which is a cute algorithm because it just enumerates all Voronoi diagram, which correspond to a possible solution for your problem. And, are, and they just show that, you know, they are N to the KD uh, interesting Voronoi diagrams. So you can just enumerate all of these guys. Okay. So this is this is kind of what happening what happened mainly uh, more than 10 years ago, except for maybe maybe the Kimmins thing. But yeah, more or less that this is like, you know, that pretty old stuff on this problem. So now let me move to something which is uh, more recent. So a couple of years ago, we showed that, uh, in fact, n to the omega k is needed even in R4. So even in low dimensional Euclidean space, you can't get a faster algorithm, faster exact algorithm than n to the omega k. You need to enumerate. Basically, you can't do better than brute force in low dimension, which is kind of surprising in some sense that you can't have a better speed up. Because in fact, in the plane, you can do n to the order of root k. So in fact, you can you can you can have a little speed up, right, uh, in the plane. But as soon as you reach R four, then n to the omega k is needed unless you 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 violate the exponential time hypothesis. So, and we we kind of left open the question in R three. It's not very clear whether n to the omega k or n to the root k is the right answer for. Um, uh, Three. Okay, so that's for the discrete case. If I give you ahead of time the discrete center you have to pick from. Okay, for the continuous case, there is a there is some FPT work the uh, Fomin et al last year I think. So yeah, I should put the citation here, which tells you that you can in fact uh, solve the k-median under L1 in the continuous case where you can pick everywhere. Because now you don't end up in the, you don't have the Fermat problem again, because you are in L1 and it's the k-median, so it's, it's kind of easy. And you can solve it exactly in f of d, in po, f of d and poly time, and where capital D is the value of the optimum solution, so the sum of the distances. Uh, and I think the main open question here is, is how, for the continuous case, what's the i think that's a beautiful question is like how can you solve it how fast can you solve it in for the continuous case where you can locate your centers everywhere so if you if can you do better than enumerating your all the voronoi diagrams or not so if you enumerate all the voronoi diagram you get n to the kd and can you do better than that can you do n can you prove that you need at least n to the omega k plus d can you get n to the and a, a low amount of n to the omega d for constant k, can you, you know, it's pretty open here. But I guess it's, this will involve some kind of algebraic uh, approach for bounding the number of uh, interesting solutions. I mean, I, I expect it to be more like algebraic than, than combinatorial here. Okay. But so that's, that's a, yeah. Small question, yes. yeah. Can you recall what is the n and d? Okay, yeah, so n is the number of points I give you uh, in, uh, you know, the number of points you want to cluster. And when I'm going to talk about the discrete case, n is also going to be the number of candidate centers. So I give you like, you know, um, yeah, you know, poly, 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 your n points and poly n candidate centers. So that's the, that's the, that's the number of points. So that's, that's n and, uh, and the number of candidate centers. And d is the dimension, uh, little d is the dimension for me in this talk. It's like uh, the, the dimension that um, points live on in the, of the Euclidean space. And, okay. uh, and if we're in general metrics, the dimension is not specified because, you know, you can have like, you know, you think about the shortest pass metric of a graph, for example, or something like this. And then, you know, there is not really a dimension anyway. Okay, thanks. Okay, good. So let me move forward. So let me give you a very uh, quick summary on the LP metric, so Euclidean space of dimension D. So if you parameterize by D plus K, so you're happy to have exponential algorithm, then there is an exact N to the DK which is the best you can hope for if you are in the in the discrete setting, but we don't know for continuous. So that's the setting. If you just parameterize by D, then you know that it's NPR for D equals two already, but you can get a one plus epsilon in time F of D epsilon and poly log N. And that's something we showed last year at, at Fox with uh, uh, David and Andreas. And when you parameterize by K, you know that it's NPR for K equals two. So there is not much you can do. But if you relax a little bit, then you can get one plus epsilon in F of K epsilon and polylogan. And that's a work by Amit Kumar, uh, Sabawal, and Sen in, in 2010. 
And now if you remove all parameters, you know, you just want poly time, poly n k d, then you can get some kind of uh, constant factor approximation. Uh, and that's a recent, uh, that's Fox papers two years ago. That's the, that's the setting. That's a, that's a, I think that's the overall picture for, for uh, a fixed parameter tractability of these problems in, you know, uh, Euclidean space. There is not, I mean, yeah, that's mainly what you can parameterize with. Okay, so now the, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, show a, a, an interesting phenomenon that is, I think, a little uh, uh, surprising maybe here. Okay, so what we showed last year was that, in fact, you have also harness of approximation uh, if you want something that is polynomial in, in uh, everything, in K, D, N, you want polynomial, two polynomial time algorithm. Then you can show that there is some hardness. You can't get one plus epsilon. Even if you are in, in, uh, in, uh, in Euclidean space, you can't get uh, a p-task for the problem. You need to, I mean, like you have to, uh, you, can't, you can't go below like, you know, 1.56 for, uh, you know, K median, yeah, sorry, K means in L1, for example. So for any LP metric, there is some kind of lower bound uh, you can get. And uh, even in the continuous setting, you have some lower bound. I mean, here it seems that the continuous version is kind of easier because the lower bound we can prove are kind of smaller than the lower bound we can prove for the discrete version. And this comes a little bit from the combinatorics, right? Because you can say that, you know, the centers are specific locations, so you can enforce some kind of hardness. Um, so that's the, that's the that's okay. So 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 basically, the message from this slide is that in if you want something that is truly polynomial, even in Euclidean space of arbitrary dimension, of course, you can't get uh, uh, one plus epsilon. Okay. Um, okay. And this is also true, of course, in general metrics. In general metrics, uh, you have some harness of approximation because general metrics also includes. Uh, Euclidean space, of course. So uh, general metrics, in fact, the harness is even higher. Okay, so that's uh, old results, like a pretty old results from the 90s. And you know, there is a 3.94 harness for k-means and the nine approximation. So there is a little gap here still. And same thing for k-median, there is 1.73 harness and 2.67 uh, approx. So that's, that's okay. So, so there is some harness in general metrics. There is some harness in Euclidean space. If you want something that is polynomial in everything. Okay, but now when you move to the parameterized world, okay, so now you, 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 you go to FPT algorithm parameterized by K, okay? So now the running time of my algorithm can be two to the K poly N, okay? Something like that. Okay, in that case, we showed last year with Anupam Gupta, Amit Kumar, uh, Wei Yong Li and Jason Li, we showed that in fact, you can get one plus eight over a. You can get the, the you can get the exact same bound as the, of the harness. Okay, you can match the harness that is known for the full uh, polynomial time algorithm. You can get three point nine four harness, uh, one point seven three harness. Uh, you can you can get that in terms of approximation. So you can match the approximation, and you can also show that it's hard to go beyond that, even if you have f of k running time. Okay, so in the general metric case, these bounds are the right one. You, 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 you can achieve them, and I'm going to explain a little bit how to achieve them, and you can't be, go below that, even if you have exponential time in K. That's interesting, right? And now, the surprising thing here is that, as I told you, uh, if you move to the Euclidean setting, then if you allow exponential time in k, if you go to 2 to the k poly n, then you can in fact get 1 plus epsilon. So there is no harness. But in the general metric case, there is a harness. So in fact, the, the FPT, the parameterized complexity by k, gives you a lot of power if you move to Euclidean. Okay, so Euclidean parameterized by k is way much easier, way easier than uh, full polynomial time compared to the general metrics, okay? So in general metrics, uh, the bounds, as we see, are tight, even parameterized by k. In the Euclidean case, you can get one plus epsilon parameterized by k, and you can't get it uh, if you have full polynomial time. Okay. 
and of course you can ask okay do we what do we learn from this right so is there any is there any more uh is there any deeper message than just you know uh you know getting like this interesting phenomenon that seems to suggest that you know the euclidean structure that we put on top of the metric structure right is is giving you a lot of power a lot of computational power for these problems uh is there more more to, more, more than that okay. and uh and I guess there is some kind of interesting intuition behind it, and to understand the situation, I think it's uh, it's um, it's good to take a, a set cover perspective on this clustering problem, in the sense that it's one way to if you if you are doing some kind of theory like you know complexity theory, then you what you may be interested in is seeing this set cover problem. Uh, sorry, seeing this clustering problem as some kind of set cover problems with uh, some uh, imposed structure on the set. Okay, so let's let's go through this uh, uh, very um, uh, very uh, briefly. So you consider a set cover instance. So a set cover instance is simply you know a, a universe, a set of universe element. Okay, and a set of sets that are subset of the universe element. And you know the question you want to answer is whether there is a set of k sets that cover the whole universe. That's a set cover problem, okay? And it's a very fundamental problem. And the interesting thing is that we know, we understand the complexity of the set cover problem very well, very deeply, right? We know that there is a log n approx, and we know how to prove a log n lower bound, and you know the constants are, are like, almost like the constants are matching. So it's it's um, it's very deep understanding of set cover. And now let's work, let's create a clustering instance to show you how clustering relates to set cover. So now take your universe element and for each of them create a client in the metric. Okay. Also take your set and for each set create uh, of your of your set cover instance, create a candidate center in your metric. Now, okay, if you connect, now you have to set the distances. Okay. So now for a client, so an element of your universe, you put a distance one to a candidate center if the candidate center contains the element. Okay. And if otherwise, you know, between a, 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 a universe element, a client, and a, a candidate center that does not contain, whose set does not contain the universe element, put a distance that is as large as you want. Okay. As large as possible. Okay. Very large. Okay. And you know, now we know that if you can pick k candidate centers that cover that for which everyone is at distance one, then we know that there is a solution to your set cover instance of size at most k. So you can really see this k median as a metric set cover. And I'm going to describe a little bit more this, 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 this reduction because as we'll see, this harness reduction is going to help us design algorithm. Okay, so they're going to go hand by hand by hand. Okay, so let me try to prove you some kind of harness uh, of approximation for clustering problem. Okay, so you, you will look at this max coverage problem, which is like the set cover problem, it's just a different perspective on the max coverage, of, on the set cover problem, but it's, it's essentially the set cover problem. You are given a collection of subsets, so U is the universe, S are like, you know, a subset of the universe, K is some parameter. And what you want to know is, uh, you want to cover a maximum fraction of u. Okay, you want to pick k subset and cover as many elements of the universe as possible. Okay, so it's really like set cover, right? Set cover would be okay. You pick k guys and you cover everyone. Okay, so it's like this. This here, I'm just relaxing a little bit. You are bound to pick k guys, but you want to cover as much as possible. Okay. Now, from the proof of Feige on set cover. You know that it's empty hard to distinguish between the two following uh, type of instances. Either you have a max coverage where you cover a fraction of one, so you cover all the elements, okay? So it's a, it's, there is a set cover of size k for this instance, or you cover a one minus one over e plus epsilon fraction, okay? And it's empty hard to distinguish between the two, okay? So now, equipped from this, let's build a k median instance. So we do the exact same thing I, I said before. You create some candidate centers that correspond to the sets, and you create some universe, some clients uh, that correspond to the universe element. And now we are going to do the following. 
if the uni if the universal element u1 belongs to the set s you put it at distance one and if u2 is not in the set s you put it at distance three okay okay so now if there is a yes instance, if the instance you gave me for mass coverage is a yes instance then i can pick k sets so i can pick the corresponding candidate centers such that each client is covered so each client is a distance at most one from a candidate center okay so that's a yes case right so my optimal comedian cost is the size of the universe everyone is paying one okay that's my set cover so that's a yes case right there is a max coverage that covers everyone now the no case the no case is that the mass coverage the best set of k guys of k sets is covering at most one minus one over e plus epsilon fraction of the element. So it means that for any k subset of candidate centers, there is at most one minus one over e uh, fraction of the clients that are at distance one, and the rest are necessarily at distance three. Okay? So what's the cost in that case? Well, the cost in that case of the optimum solution is at least uh, u times one minus one over e, because that's the guys who are paying one, then there are at most that many of them that are paying one, and there are at least one over a fraction of u that is paying three. So what's that? That's one plus two over e, and that's exactly the best known harness for k medium. So this is pretty clean reduction. I mean, uh, uh, if you if you if you miss the point or something, then you know you should you should really ask because I think it's uh, it's just that I did a bad job because it should be pretty pretty clean. Okay, and now, now I want to, to, there are two points I want you to take away from this. So one is to convince you that this is very close to set cover. In fact, it's a very, it's a very, uh, the problem is very similar to set cover. We want to cover points and there is this metric which tells you how well you would like to cover them. How, how, how well covered is the points given the candidate center. Okay, so it's really like a set cover thing. So it's really frustrating that the complexity of the set cover problem is very well understood, whereas the complexity of this problem is still not very well understood. Okay, so there is, that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is that I want to show you how to get uh, this approximation warranty in the FPT time. Okay, and that's gonna be the next part of the talk. And um, yes, and that's, that's it. And you know, okay, and maybe one thing is that in the FPT world, if you parameterize by K, you can't get better than that for set cover, even if you have like you know two to the k running time. So, so in fact, you know it's really close to the set cover problem. Okay, any question? It's okay. Okay, so let's move. Let me move. Forward. So that's a, that's a, that's just the you know that's the reduction from one cooler. That's exactly what I said. You know, it's hard to distinguish between a yes instance where the cost is like x, and a no instance where the cost is like one plus two over e minus epsilon times x. That's the, that's the stuff. So no, nothing fancy. Uh, yeah, this is old stuff. Well, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. And, uh, and the reduction, okay, so what are the ingredients from this reduction? And I think this is the important part for, you know, understanding um, the algorithm part that is coming next. So the reduction requires two things. So if a universe element belongs to a set, then the distance between the two elements is one. That's the... That's the first thing, right? So if, if you are covered, then you pay one. You don't pay less, you don't pay more, you pay one. And otherwise, you pay three. And if three, I didn't say, you know, if I could put distance infinite, then I would be happy because the gap will be even higher. The thing is that I can't put more than three because of the triangle inequality constraint. Okay. So in fact, uh, you know, if I want to make sure, if I, if I choose to satisfy the first constraint here, then you know the best thing I can put here, the, the, the largest number I can put here is gonna be three. Because you know, otherwise I can go to a set, then maybe go to another element, and then go to another set. So you know it's like gonna be three. So it's a three hop uh, distance. So you know that's that's the best I can do if I want to ensure that my this my, my uh, instance is gonna satisfy the triangle inequality. So it's a metric. Okay. And in fact, here you can see that if you move to the Euclidean setting even Euclidean high dimensional setting, then, you know, putting this, this, this tight constraints, right? If you want to embed the instance I gave you before into Euclidean space, 
then you're going to be in trouble because uh, you know putting the three here is going to put a lot of constraints on the location of your points, and in fact, you can't achieve it. In fact, it's it's the the Euclidean distance, uh, the Euclidean yeah Euclidean space are putting a lot of constraints on these reductions, and the gap is getting lower. You are, you can't put three anymore. You could you need, you need to put something smaller than three. Okay, that's, uh, that's uh, okay. Uh, right, exactly. So that's my my comment here. If you impose additional structure on the metric, not only triangle inequality, but like you know Euclidean distance or the space metric of you know some specific graph classes like minor free graph, planar graph, something like this, Jacquard distance, edit distance, you know the harness is going to change because you know the three is going to get be smaller. Oops, the, the three is going to be is going to get smaller. Okay, good. That's the that's the comment I had here. And um, now I'm going to move to this result that we got last year for solving this problem, getting this tight bound, this one plus two over e approximation, m approximation algorithm in f of k poly n. Okay. So the frustrating, the, the frustrating part of this of this problem is that you know if I was working on the in the reduction instance, okay, in the reduction instance meaning that points are at distance either one or three from the center. This is like a very stupid instance because, of course, in the real world, my clustering problems, the distance can be like, you know, um, you know 0 0.1, 1 1.10, 1.1, you know, 5, 10, infinite, like very loud, very far, so on. So, you know, here, if I'm constrained on working on the reduction instance where point are distance 1 and 3, then, you know, there is an approximation algorithm for max coverage that achieves 1 minus 1 over 8, that is tight, you know, just the greedy uh, for set cover, for example, will do it. And you could get you if you if you were working on this you would get you would be able to get one minus one over e on the reduction instance, and if you if you were getting one minus one over e in the reduction instance, what would be what you will do is that you know getting a, exactly the one plus two over e uh, result we were getting before, namely that you know one minus one over e will be covered at distance one, one, one and like the rest would be covered like one over e fraction would be being three so one plus two over e in total. And that will be uh, will be happy. So the, the 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 hard part is really to handle to handle the heterogeneity of the distances. Okay, the distances are diverse, and that's the challenge. Okay, that's and that's the only challenge you know to solve this fundamental problem. That's the to handle the the, the diversity of the distances. Okay, okay. So the algorithm will be in three steps. But there will be a pause after the second step because the second step will see that you know it's really easy. So the first step is almost like black box. I'm not going to go because I don't have enough time. But you know I can explain very. I mean I, I can give more details if you want. It's not very technical. But the the what's known is that there, there are epsilon core sets of uh, these problems, which are in the FPT language they are kernels. So they are they are a minimal set of points that preserve the cost. In the sense that an epsilon core set for us is a weighted set of clients, such that for any set of k centers, the k median cost of the core set client is the same as the k median cost of the original client up to one plus epsilon factor. So in fact, you preserve the k median cost, you preserve the solution, but you work with a smaller set of clients. And that is really useful. And this was not developed at all for complexity purposes. This was developed for dealing with large data sets. You know, and you you have a, a billion points that I said you want to cluster it into a hundred clusters. Then, in fact, what this guy show, for example, in uh, in in 2011, but there are better results right now. They show that you know you can get kill you. There exists core set of that contain only k log n points. So, in fact, if you have one billion set data data sets, and you want to cluster into hundred clusters, then you know you're gonna get only keep like a uh, ten thousand points or something, and that's a good approximation of your data set. So it's a really powerful uh, tool to reduce the size, okay? And if you are working with FPT, you know, we are pretty happy because we are getting from size n to size k log n. So we're happy. We are happy because we can, in fact, compute this in poly time, even maybe, maybe linear time or something. We can, we can be very efficiently computing these courses. The thing is that we are not yet down. We are not yet done with, the, with, this, with, this, with this thing because if we wanted to just enumerate all possible clusterings, then it's not clear that you can still you can do it because you have this log n. So enumerating all possible clustering will be k to the k log n 
And that's n to the k, so that's too far, that's too slow for us. N to the k is too slow. What we are happy with is 2 to the k poly n. Okay, so, so we can't enumerate yet. We need to do uh, something a little bit smarter than just enumeration, um, but not too smart because we did it, so it's not that crazy. Okay, so uh, I'm going to now go to the second step. So is the, first, the first step should be clear, right? We just, uh, it's black box, right? I didn't tell much. We just reduce the size of the input to k log n. Now, from, the, from now on, forget about like input of size n. We work with input of size k log n. Step two. Okay, so among the core set points, what we would like to do is guess the k points u1 to uk that are the closest to the k optimal centers together with the distance to the optimal centers. Okay, so we want to guess which point u1 is closer to the center c1 of opt and the distance between these two, between u1 and c1. Okay, this, this is the distance I'm going to call it d1. Okay. So U1 to UK are the leaders, okay? They are the closest guys. So, you know, if my instance was the, the if my instance of the comedian was the black points plus the green points, right? This was my comedian instance. And my optimum solution are the red guys. Then my leaders are the ones that are the closest, so they are the green guys. Okay? So these are my leaders. They are the, the points that are the closest to the opt centers. And all these uh, little edges here, the distances between the green and red, these are my uh, distances d1 to dk. Okay. Okay. And, the, the, okay. and now, uh, so this definition should be more or less clear, except if you have a question, you should, you should feel free to ask. I just want to guess which point is the closest to the optimum centers. So how, how much time will, I, will it take me to guess, to make this guessing? I have, remember, I have k log n points. And I need to choose to, to guess which one are the, 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 the closest one. And there are k of them. So I can just, it's, it's just going to be like, you know, k log n choose k. So it's k log n to the k. OK? So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's OK. That's, that's FPT time. Okay, it's not n to the k, it's k log n to the k. So that's okay. That's, that's, good, that's good enough running time for us. Okay? And I need to guess the distances. So here I can do some little trick to have some kind of approximate distances up to 1 plus epsilon factor. So there are only like basically log n distances that are interesting as well. So that's a... Uh, I'm not going to go too much into the details, but, you know, if you have n distances, you can kind of round them to power of 1 plus epsilon, and you can show that there are only like log n different values that are of interest. And you just have to guess again. Apparently. So the guessing here is just enumeration, right? I'm going to try all possible, all possible k tuples for my leaders and all possible k tuples for the distances. So it's a brute force, nothing, nothing smart. OK. So that's the end of step two. And in fact, the end of step two is making us pretty happy. Because what, what do we know out of the end of step two? So consider the good guess, OK, the best guess. So the correct guess. So I have the leaders, I have the distances, and what I see right now, I see the leaders, so the green guys, and I know that I need to pick centers from the blue balls, okay? Because that's my guess. I guess that these guys are the leaders, and I need to pick a center in each blue ball, okay? Because you know that's that's what I have guessed. I have guessed that you know this guy is the closest to the red. And the distance to the red is this little thing. So I just have to pick someone from the blue ball. Okay. So I have changed a little bit the question, which is now we want to find the k centers. We want to find one center per blue ball so that we achieve the best k median cost. I mean, I have changed the problem. Uh, it's, it's pretty clear why this problem would be easier to the original problem. But now I'm going to uh, explain a little bit. So at the end of step two, as, uh, at the end of step two, um, there is a, a, a very easy way to get a three approximation to the problem. You can just pick anyone, any center, any candidate center in the blue ball, random one, arbitrary one. In each blue ball, you just pick an arbitrary center, and you know this yellow. So opt opt was red, and somehow I picked yellow. 
naively because I just pick one guy in each blue ball. So, you know, just the naive thing. But yet, already, we can show that this yellow solution is a three approximation to the problem. And that's what I'm going to show now. So, there is a simple solution now, which, which is like, you know, take any client C. And, you know, in the optimum solution, it was going to this red guy. Now, I'm going to assign it to this yellow guy here. So I need to kind of compute the change in cost if I go from red to the yellow part. So remember that in red, that's what uh, this guy was paying at the beginning. He was paying some kind of opt C. OK? Now, what is the distance to the yellow? And this is where I'm going to use the triangle inequality. The distance is now red plus the diameter of the blue ball, right? red plus going to the center of the blue ball and then going back to the yellow. And the yellow is again in the blue ball. So what is the distance? So the, 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 remember that the, the diameter of the blue ball is twice di. Di is the distance from the green to the red. OK, so it's twice di. So what client C is now paying is paying okay the red here plus the diameter, so 2di. So it's paying opt C plus 2di. But now remember that the, red, the, the green here is the leader. So he is, the, he is closer to the red than C, because otherwise C would be my leader. Okay, so green is closer to red than C. So we know that opt C is actually larger than di. So in fact, this quantity here, opt C plus 2di, is at most 3 opt C. OK? So, you know, picking anyone in the blue guy is a good solution. It's a three approximation. It's not that good because it's three, but it's at least a constant factor, which is very naive. Okay. Okay, so there is a simple three approximation. So now what we can say is that, okay, there is an obvious naive three approximation in the blue balls, and we can try to improve it. So now I'm changing the problem. I'm going to start from a, a, a three approximation. And I want to improve it as much as possible so as to get the best possible solution. OK? So, okay. so if, we promise you, if I promise you that while I try to improve this solution, I'm going to try to improve this solution. But if I make the promise that as long as when I try to improve it, I will always pick a center in each blue ball, Okay, I'll, I'll promise that. I'll always pick a center in, the blue, in each blue ball, but I'm going to try to improve as much as possible. Then I can work it that at any point in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the execution of the algorithm, there is no client C will that will be paying more than three times what the C is paying in out. Okay, because of the argument I just gave you, right? The argument I just gave you tells you that, you know, at any point in time, if I pick from the blue balls, client C is never going to be paying more than three times what he's paying in out. OK, so then we are starting to be happy because this seems to be looking more like the reduction instance that we know how to solve, right? Because in the good case, C is going to be paying what he's paying in opt. In the bad case, C is going to be paying at most three times what he's paying in opt. So there is, again, this one versus three gap. But it's very controlled right now, right? Because I, if I make the promise that I pick in the blue ball, then you know this one versus three is what's going to happen, and then I can try to use uh, the max the max coverage techniques uh, or the self cover algorithm basically to solve this problem, this reduced problem. And in fact, that's what we are going to do, and that's the last step. And the last step is kind of funny because what we're going to say is that for each client C, we are going to have this the delta C, which is the worst case uh, bound that this guy is paying. So the worst case bound is what? is you know you are going to the uh, leader and then you are paying the the di that's what we show you know the worst case bound for this client here was you know you go to the center and then you pay di that's a that's a valid uh, upper bound on what each client is going to be and now what you want to do is for each set of centers s you want to define improve as the gain in cost that you will make by picking these centers. 
Okay, so inside that, the k-median cost, and you want to compare it, basically you relate it to what you would be paying in the worst case. Okay, and what you want to get is the best improvement, right? Because in the worst case, I know that I'm paying this. And, you know, if I pick good center, I know that I'm going to get a huge improvement. Okay, so what you want to find is the set S star that gives you the best improvement while picking one element in each blue ball. And the writing time here, you can, and we show that we can do this in poly and k time. Okay, so let me give you now the full proof. So what's the final solution? The final solution is going to have alg, the original the original three approximation we started with. Okay, by picking any yellow guy in the in the blue balls, minus improve, and this improve is you know what we want to maximize. We want to get the best improvement. Okay, so the best solution for improve is 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 you no know, opt. You know, if I pick opt for improve, then I'm getting an optimal solution. So I'm getting the best improvement possible. The best improvement possible is going from the alg to opt. Okay, because opt is the best k-median solution. So the best improvement is alg minus opt. We can show, and I'm not going to go too much into the idea because I don't have time, but improve is in fact a semi-modular function. So under the constraint that we pick one element per blue ball, we can optimize this function. We can get the best solution for the improved solution, for the improved function, up to a 1 minus 1 over e approximation. So again, we see the 1 minus 1 over e coming. So what's the final solution cost? We started with alg, and then we make some good improvement here, right? So, 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 so some, some very good improvement, which is the best improvement will be alg minus opt, but we get the 1 minus 1 over e of this optimal improvement. The improvement we get is slightly smaller than what we should have had, which would have been up. You know, if you forget about the 1 minus 1 over e, if I had gotten the best improvement, I would have getting alg minus alg minus up, so up. But now I'm getting 1 minus 1 over e times this. So what I'm getting is alg minus 1 minus 1 over e times alg minus up, which is 1 minus 1 over e up. Okay, this is coming from this. Plus, you know, this and that, they, can, they, they sum up to 1 over e alg. And you know, alg, I showed you it's three approximation. So what I'm getting is something which is at most one plus two over e opt. So just by translating this problem into you know some kind of some modular optimization problem uh, and phrasing it in terms of the improved function allows you to just go down, go get to the optimal bound. Okay. So one plus two over e in time f of k poly n. And you know, if you follow quickly, closely to, the, to this talk, you know, the first step was just to compute the core set, and then you can do it in poly time. The second step was when the guessing happened. We guess the leaders and their distance to the optimum centers. And this is not poly k because we need to do uh, k to the k or k log n to the k. So it's not poly k. And the last step, the last step is optimizing this modular optimization function. So this you can do in in uh, in, uh, in polytype. So that's good. And there is a low bond of one plus two over e also coming from you know gap ETH. So you know getting some 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 tight low bond. So this is tight. And I think the interesting question here is that if you could somehow remove this step two, if you can get this step two to be polytime. Even if you get something which is not a three approximation after the step two, but like a four approximation, you will already get better results for the k-median in general, in, uh, in general metric in polytime. You know, if you know how to make this step two in polytime, then you will get a uh, better bound. So the only barrier that remains now to get a polytime algorithm for that will match this low bound is to find some good blue balls. Okay, the, the blue balls I gave you, uh, then this is what you need to find. As, as, as soon as you find these guys, then you can just run your some modular optimization and you're happy. So that's the main time, actually. Okay. And so now I'll finish with a few open questions. So for the capacitated case, um, where each uh, cluster can have at most some fixed number of points that are assigned to them. Um, so, you know, some, some like, you know, maybe some, some parameter u. You can assign more than u points to each cluster. Then what we showed is that you can only get three approximation. That we showed last year with, with JSON. We showed that, uh, okay, so what we showed is that you can get the core set for capacitated as well. So the first step is okay. 
And we stop at the second step because we don't know how to do the submodular optimization on top of it because now we have capacities and it looks like the function is not submodular anymore. So not clear how to, 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 to do that. But can we do better than three? So the three is just giving up, getting, we just got the three using the naive approach, right? Just getting the blue box. The lower bound remains one plus two over e, so you know there is a gap between three and one plus two over e, and you know getting FPT capacitated case matching getting tight downs would be interesting. It's just that the last step we don't know how to do. Okay. Okay, so there is a, another surprising setting where in the L infinity uh, high dimension L infinity, we could show some kind of lower bound of two. So which is higher than the lower bound that is known for general metrics, right? The lower bound is one plus two over e, which is like 1.7. But in the L infinity setting for continuous case, so L infinity is really like, you know, you have N dimension and the distance between two vectors is like the L infinity norm. And you can put your centers anywhere in the space. Okay, so this is the continuous setting. Then there is a lower bound of two, even for a constant number of clusters. Even, even if for two clusters. For two clusters. So, and we have an upper bound of two in time n to the k. And if we want poly time, then we can do, we only know how to go higher than five. So can we close again? Can you get a approximation, a two approximation in FPT time for the continuous setting in L infinity or better than five, you know, in poly time? That would be an interesting question. And Right, and now maybe a final question, which I think is interesting, and you know, uh, people interested in stringology maybe are interested in that too. Um, now, you know, I've talked about yeah, you know, general metrics, which satisfy triangle inequality, Euclidean metrics, but there are other metrics, right? There is an edit distance metric, which is of course a natural metric too, um, which is actually used for string compression, right? So you, I give you a lot of strings, and you want to have one string that summarizes your set of strings. And what you want to do is, as a summary, you want to have some kind of uh, string that is close to all the other string uh, of your sets. And so it's the, basically this is the question is like, you know, can you get a good approximation for edit distance metric, one median, right? One median in the continuous case, can you get one string that is the sum of the distances to the other string is small, is minimized, the sum of the distance. So there is a naive two approximation which is very easy to, 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 to get. And, you know, can we show that there is a one plus epsilon approximation? I think it's NP hard, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's NP hard. Okay, so can you get one plus epsilon approximation or show that you can't solve it, you know, uh, efficiently? You know, there is some kind of fine grained complexity, perhaps, uh, question here. Uh, that's the, that's the, that's the, I think that's a cute open question. And uh, I'm going to stop here and thank you for your attention. And happy to take questions, of course. Okay, so thank you, Vincent. It was a, a great talk. Okay, thanks. Uh, oh, I see Michel has uh, some questions. So, for worst case, yeah, do you know it's a question of points where the problem is easy? Uh, oh, that's a good question. So. So in fact, if you have like, uh, okay, good. So in, in Euclidean space, if you have, for example, a mixture of Gaussians, of K Gaussians, and the means are kind of well enough separated compared to the variant, right? So, so the means, yeah. So, so let's say all the means are at distance one and the variance is tiny, is small compared to the distances, then yes, then you, then you can solve, then, you, then, then yes, then you should be able to solve efficiently. Uh, in in uh, yeah near linear time near linear time yeah, that's that's for sure. Uh, basically, there are a lot of works on um, clustering uh, clustering instances that have some kind of beyond worst case analysis. So basically, you you would expect that the distance between the centers of the optimum solution is large compared to you know uh, the distance of the points of the cluster, and uh, and in that in this in this scenario, you have efficient algorithms. You have efficient algorithm. You can you can get uh, beyond the uh, in approximability bounds, for example. So yeah, so there are a lot of works. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, that's strong.
Okay, we may have a question from Simon. Let's wait. So continuous one million is sometimes hard. It's continuous. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, the question is how do you, yeah, uh, 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 let me pause this question. Yeah, so is continuous key median as hard as discrete key median? Does, does my question make sense? I, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, like, the uh, question, I mean, the, the, I think, I think you know, the, the, if you give you, if I give you, like, even the partition, right? I give you the partition of the point, the optimal partition of the point, then, you know, for each part of the partition, if you want to get the optimal cost, you still need to solve a one median instance somehow. Yes, so it's, at least as hard of the as finding the one median but right. is it even harder or is it like so, com combining both would it be harder than just computing the one million or computing the yeah, one million yeah. is the, the hot part yeah that's a good question and uh okay so my bold guess for the complexity class of this one million problem is that in high dimension it should fall into this uh, existential theory of the reals, which is a complexity class, which is beyond NP. Mm -hmm. and I think it falls into that. It's just a matter of proving it. And I think that if that's the case, then uh, then it should be they should be more or less the same. Yes. Okay. Then, then then they should be more or less the same. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Right. Yeah. But I think it's a great question. Uh, showing that you know, showing that it belongs to to this class. Uh, this existence of the theory of the real, I think that's the that's a natural question. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's a good question. Does the C subset X helps? Yeah, so it helps uh, in the wrong direction. It helps. It, it makes the hardness proof harder. I mean, like, so it's you know we can't get uh, one plus two over your hardness in that setting. So the only setting we yeah. So yes. So for the FPT for the proof I have shown. Uh, I think you would get indeed uh, one plus one over a. So you will improve instead of one plus two over a, you would get one plus one over a. So it will it will be easier if you can pick uh, ah, 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 subsets. Uh, yes. No. In fact, yeah. In fact, if if you know that it's a proper subset, then as soon as you have the core set, then you can take any subset of k centers. From the subset, and you know that one of them is is up. So in fact, you can enumerate over over uh, over the core set points. So if if you know that the candidate centers are subsets, then you can get one plus epsilon. So the hardness breaks down. The hardness breaks down. You you can get one plus epsilon. Yeah. So the complexity is really coming from yeah from the fact that you yeah. Yeah, for, for, yeah, it's interesting. It's it's a funny problem, right? Because in general metrics, the the complexity is really coming from the fact that you have candidate centers because they are forcing the harness. But now, if you move to Euclidean, the harness is coming from the fact that you have continuous centers. So <laughs> it's a uh, it's kind of uh, yeah interesting uh, phenomenon that ha that are happening with this uh, set cover metric set cover problem. Yeah, basically, yeah. So basically, the proof for core sets are sampling. It's a just it's just a refined idea of sampling because okay, yeah. Basically, you know, if you had, if you know that opt as like uh, basically k clusters of roughly equal size, then you know k log k sample uniform sample will be pretty good for you. Um, so the the problem of this core set, I mean, like the just the core set is the idea of core set of computing core set is slightly more evolved. Because you need to address uh, clusters of different size, like the heterogeneity of the size, and you know clusters that are very very far, and you know different radius of the clusters. But basically, the idea—I mean, yeah. So we have a paper. We have recently a paper where we improve the bounds for core sets, and basically the idea is like you get down to epsilon nets and epsilon approximation. So it, it's really just sampling. Basically, the idea is that it's just sampling. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and 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 yeah, and corset yeah, corset have been designed 
to to streaming. The motivation for Corset has been has been has been to 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 design for sample for streaming. So in fact, most of the Corset construction work for streaming, so that you can get your stream size to k log n, which is much better than n. Yeah. So that's that's it. And in fact, maybe I can add an an interesting question is that um, going yeah on top of the Michel Michel question is that uh, the Corset construction we know. Are in fact all based on sampling, so there is no, there is a, it's a big open question, I think, to get the randomized, the randomization techniques for corset. We don't know how to de-randomize corset uh, in in efficiently. Uh, so I think the only known way to de-randomize corset will be n to the k. So even like I give you a running time of two to the k poly n, we don't know how to get a deterministic corset. So not even talking about like poly k n uh, de-randomization. So it's really sampling. It's really sampling. It's just that you want an interesting probability distribution so that you don't just do like a uniform, but it's basically sampling. Um, 